GOP Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene is officially the first sitting member of Congress to testify under oath about the January 6th insurrection. She was grilled for nearly four hours yesterday in an Atlanta courtroom as part of a case seeking to ban her from running for re-election. The group behind the effort says that Greene violated her constitutional oath for allegedly encouraging the attack on the Capitol and supporting the rioters. They point to incendiary comments like these. And this is an important time in our history. We can't allow this just to just to be gone, you know, just to let it go. You can't allow it to just transfer power peacefully like Joe Biden wants and allow him to become our president because he did not win this election. It's being stolen and the evidence is there. I'll echo the words of uh, many of my colleagues as we were just meeting together in our GOP conference meeting this morning. This is our 1776 moment. From where I'm standing, she sounds pretty firm in her convictions. But when Green took the stand, she suddenly came down with a case of amnesia. She couldn't remember much of what she said or did surrounding the attack, saying, I don't recall or I don't remember dozens upon dozens of times. In one cringeworthy exchange, Green tried to lie before realizing that the plaintiff's lawyer was about to bust out the receipts. In fact, you think that Speaker Pelosi is a traitor to the country, right? Uh, you're, I'm not answering that question. It's speculation. It's you, hypothetical. You've, you've said that, haven't you, Ms. Green, that she's a traitor to the country? No, I haven't said that. Okay. Put up Plaintiff's Exhibit 5, please. Which, which... Oh, no, wait. Hold on now. I believe by not upholding the uh, sec securing the border, that that violates her oath of office. Mm -mm. There is a lot going on with this particular testimony, but it could also have wider implications. Cynthia Oxney and Michael Steele are back with me. Cynthia, the burden of proof is, of course, on the challenger to show that Green incited violence or hum somehow helped the insurrectionists. Your take on how that played out, was that burden of proof met yesterday? I don't think so. I'm sorry to say, but I don't think so. Why not? Now, for instance, you, sh you just showed that clip about the receipts. Yeah. That wasn't about the insurrection. That was about the border wall. It had nothing to do with the insurrection. Gotcha. That's where he had the receipts, right? So she said eight million times, I don't recall. And he didn't, he had a couple of mm -hmm. tweets, and he ha but he didn't have, like, for example, he pressured her on, um, did you ever call Mark Meadows and say that there should be martial law? And when she said, I don't recall... He didn't have anything to back up that. So, so let's be clear. So, this was an evidentiary hearing is what you're saying, it, it was right? An and there was no evidence. And there was no evidence. And the judge was an, an, an administrative law judge, yep. not a regular judge, who didn't really adhere to the, the rules of evidence. And all kinds of things came in. She took complete control. And, and he let it go. Uh, there were just clear times when he should have slammed down and sustained objections, and he didn't. She rambled on about CNN. He did nothing. Um, people think these cases are easy. They are not easy. They are hard. And they are hard now because we've had so much stonewalling to get the evidence. And while it's helpful for cases like this to go forward to try to get stuff, they didn't really have it. They didn't have what they needed. They needed to have a nexus between from the time she from the time it happened and actually moving from a big rally to actually going into the Capitol and doing the insurrection. They needed some evidence on that engagement word, that word on how it moved from a peaceful rally into killing people inside. And and they don't have that. And 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 I wish they did. I think she encouraged it. I know in my heart she encouraged it. But that's very different from what happens in a courtroom. And people need to appreciate how difficult this is. Got it. So, Michael, whatever the outcome of this hearing, should someone with this kind of acute memory loss even be <laughs> eligible to run for re-election? It's wholly irrelevant. Doesn't matter. She, I was watching that following... Uh, Twitter uh, in responses, particularly in, in the conservative universe, she's coming out of this thing stronger, you know, than, than she went in. The reality politically 
is that you know she owned the courtroom. You, uh, you Cynthia just uh, alluded to that. She she took control. She was smirking. She was laughing. She was clearly lying about what she did not remember. And she knew and got caught in that one little moment when oh you actually have something that says I said what I said. Um, and it, it is it is just stunning to me that these prosecutors this prosecutor I get it's hard. But damn, go out and get the evidence if you're going to bring the case. You got, I mean, there's enough that you can, you know, patchwork that evidence together to create the impression. Just as she created an impression that she was in control, created an impression that she actually is not in control here, but they didn't do that. So um, I, I see this is going to be a win for her, and she's going to be emboldened in the new house under Kevin McCarthy. She'll probably have a committee chairmanship. Yeah, but Michael, everyone is looking at the outcome of this particular lawsuit as a potential barometer, right, for other controversial GOP lawmakers trying to run for re-election. It's interesting, though, because this is not a jury that's going to decide. And in fact, it's really not the judge, even though the judge makes the recommendation. The person who decides MTG's electoral fate is Brad Raffensperger, the Georgia Secretary of State, who's also running for re-election, who we all know never found those missing 11,780 votes that Trump needed him to find. What are the chances that Raffensperger tells the GOP, including Trump, that he's still not going to play ball with stuff like that? I, I, you know, I think at this point it'll be very hard for him to do that. Um, you know, depending on how how the messaging comes out of this hearing, uh, I think politically Raffensperger um, is not necessarily going to upset the apple cart more than he already has. Um, you know, he's going to be in a battle to keep his seat. They've already redesigned the law. Uh, to to come at him uh, in his in his role in his role uh, as overseeing elections, so I don't see I don't see that necessarily um, turning uh, that worm turning in favor of of you know uh, a Raffensperger decision that would have Marjorie Taylor Greene sitting on the sidelines in November. So very quickly, Cynthia, before we have to go, um, OK, so maybe this evidentiary hearing, the burden of proof wasn't met. But the fact that she kept on saying, I don't recall, I don't remember, and even Michael, all of us knew she was lying. Right. Do you think there's some perjury there, or do you not think that even was going to come out of this hearing? Well, I don't know. I mean, it depends on what they can finally get. I mean, they need to win these battles on discovery. I mean, what we're learning is that there were all these meetings at the White House. Yeah. And um, did she participate in those meetings? What are the texts involved with, between her and Meadows? We don't have those. What are the texts between her and Gates? You know, Matt Gates was in the courtroom with her yesterday. Yeah, they are just being her. buddies, mm -hmm. right? Um, so w w there needs to be more evidence, and then we'll have to see. But, but the problem, you know, I don't recall is pretty slippery. And what you don't need is another loss. No, right. You, you don't, don't need, need to take it now. But 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 just in the few seconds we have left, though, in that filing that came from the January 6th committee, it does specifically reference the fact that Marjorie Taylor Greene was at the White House on December 21st plotting and dealing with the to, to overturn the election. Why did that evidence not come out before this hearing that happened yesterday? Well, I don't know that, but they did limit in the hearing the, the judge and the plaintiff's lawyers sort of ag agreed that the issue in the hearing was what happened between when she was sworn in and January 6th. So December 21 wasn't as important in this hearing. Um, and maybe that's why they didn't focus on it. I don't know. You know, when she came outside and there's that, oh, wait, I've just had the meeting with the president. We yeah. can't wait to do this. Yeah. That is, you know, to me, that's compelling. Compelling, right? Um, and it wasn't the focus. And I think it's because of that one to six. Understood. Um, focus. Gotcha. Well, we need to have Cynthia and Michael come back. Uh, thank you guys for being here this morning. You got it.